So I love this moment so much because a lot of times people will say on the phone, oh, I'll come in when I'm in town or, you know, whatever. And then it's just like something to say. It's words filling the air. But Sherry Shepard, you said it and you are here and we love you. Thank you for coming. No, but I always listen to you. Like I lived in LA for so long. (laughs) So are you still the voice of the Grammys? Uh, I do it every once in a while. I do like packages and stuff like that. Okay, But I do all the specials. I just, I always listen to you and I'm always like when I would drive and I would drive with Jeffrey, uh-huh. like we would hear your voice. So it's very, it's just very cool to be here and like looking at you. Oh my God. Well, it's so good to And you have here. a really great voice, but you're so much more beautiful than your voice. Uh-huh. Like it's really cool. Sherry Shepard. Be here. There's it a reason nice why everybody. they call her the feel good TV show. Oh you make man. make people feel good. You really do. I'm thankful to be, I'm, well, thank you for having me. Well, my God. Okay. So but. congrats on season three. We got renewed yeah. for season three. But you act like you're surprised. Well, is that you, kind of your, your, like your, you're humble. So is that just part of who you are? It's like when yeah. something good happens, you're like, I can't believe it. Yeah, I choose to go that way because, you know, because then it's, I appreciate it so much more. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. and I guess I've been in this business, as you know, you're in the business so long, you're so used to disappointments and no's mm. that you're, you're used to, well, if it doesn't go, I've been through it before. So I didn't, I mm-hmm. didn't have my hopes up. So I, I, I just go, I take it for what it is. And I'm so thankful to be here in the present. And, you know, if it didn't get picked up, I go, I go back to being an actress mm, or stand up comic, but it did get picked up and it's like, oh, I get to live this dream <laughs> another season. Mm. So it's, it means more to me, I guess, yeah. than if I went, yeah, we're going to get picked up. And if we don't, yeah, and I know it's a different kind of attitude. So I choose right. to be over on the other side of, oh my God, we get picked up. <laughs> Do you think if that makes any some sense? Of that, Sherry comes from your comedy background? Because I think comics tend to sort of lean toward that. We're, we're more on the pessimist side. You see what I mean? Absolutely. A little bit. Yeah, because we're so used to, and, and, you know, and I don't know if it's just comics. Being in this business, you're so used to people telling you things mm. and it doesn't happen. Yeah. Mm. You, and and um, I've been, this has been a dream for so long. It's almost like, it, am I, is this real oh, kind of I thing? I love that. So right. even on, you know, when you go on auditions, I do it and people go, how was that audition? I don't know. I did it. I let it go. Mm-hmm. So if, if I get it, it's such a surprise. That's just how. That's a great way to live. Yeah. How many auditions, Ellen, have we had for your voiceovers? Oh my gosh! I mean, a million, uh-huh. just a million voiceover auditions. Uh, I almost got Pampers, but I'm... <laughs> 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 okay, on a whole <laughs> other level. <laughs> Sherry, it, it was, was like, one I should have auditioned like... for that Pampers <laughs> commercial because I would have been passionate. Pampers, you can wear Pampers not only for babies. <laughs> That'd have been my jam, boy. It was one line. It was Pampers, live, uh, play, love. Yeah. I mean, it was Girl, the most I'd have been in there like thing. Pampers. I live, I play, and I love in my Pampers. Why You're you didn't tell one. me about that audition, Ellen? Oh, my God. It was four callbacks. It would have been big money. Girl, and they'd have gave you them diapers. Exactly. Exactly. Forget the money. You got free diapers. <laughs> At this age, that stuff come in handy. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Sherry, you oh, yes. haven't seen each other in person since the reduction. You look amazing. Thank you. This is the body you must just feel so comfortable in. There's, there's, you know. Not today, Ellen. Not no. today. Like, I, like, we've been on hiatus for two weeks. <laughs> Not today. That's why I like working, because I don't eat as much. So we've been on hiatus. We were in Vegas. Mm. I ate my way through Chippendales and Vegas. <laughs> we came to L.A. I ate ate my way through LA because mm-hmm. I had to go to all my restaurants that I love. Yeah. Then I went to uh, uh, I went to Birmingham, Alabama to perform. I ate my way through <laughs> grits and sugar and grits uh. and salt and butter. And now I'm back and I ate my way. So <laughs> today I got on more metal, literally. <laughs> Waist trainers and spanks. Oh. And I'm t- I'm t- if you like hug me, you will. It feels like I am a warrior oh. underneath. <laughs> All of the, I'm so uncomfortable just at this moment. Now I'll be I'll be fine once I get back on there on the 15th because I'm going I'm I'm gonna I, I haven't worked out I haven't gone to the gym. You know when you feel just like 
I need them pampers. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like you're going to be in Baltimore this weekend. <laughs> I'm be in ba- and I'm going to eat my what way to Baltimore. What do they have there that's good to eat? I've oh, never uh, eaten Jimmy's, Baltimore. Jimmy's, uh, Jimmy's crab. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the oh, crab cake. Yeah. Oh, get I will ready. be eating my way through all of the fish. <laughs> yeah. Go to Jimmy's. That's Jimmy's. I will be in Jimmy's. Yeah. Let uh, me know I'm coming. <laughs> yeah. But I, but I feel great. I have to say, I feel really good. I haven't yeah. because I've been traveling so much. I haven't been able to go to the the gym mm-hmm, because mm-hmm. my my call times for everything is so early. But I, this is the best that I have ever felt. Yeah, and yeah. Um, I'm feeling healthy. I feel great. I love that I got a breast reduction. Mm-hmm. I, it's just I can go without a bra. I've never. Can you really, girl? Yes. They made Check a- my Instagram. <laughs> Smaller <laughs> eyes. <laughs> Oh, oh, look up that dag on Instagram. Tell me. Like you that. tell me. <laughs> Let me tell you, something happens when you get a breast reduction. Because when you're, you know, when you have big boobs, you have to wear a bra all the time. Yes. And they're, and they're heavy. Yep. And it's just like you're leaning over. And all of a sudden, that is gone. Uh-huh. You are like, I, like, I didn't even know I had headlights. <laughs> and I do. <laughs> like, you know, and I'll, you know, my show's gonna make me delete it in probably like three days, but until those three days, you better go to Instagram and check it out. <laughs> Who did they go back and say, hey, Sherry, you're a little over the line on this? Oh, girl, we're yeah, John a Murray, who's, show. John Murray, who's our executive producer, <laughs> yeah. he's sitting behind me. I feel eyes boring into the back of my skull. But yeah, he he comes in my room, he closes the door, and he goes, yeah. I need to talk to you. Yeah. You are a talk show host. Uh-huh. You have to behave like a talk show oh. host. So in my mind, I'm going through all the talk show hosts who show their nipples, and I can't find it. <laughs> So he's like, you know, this is not befitting. It's a brand. We got, you know, we got advertisers, you know. And I'm like, well, what does bleach have to do with my nipples? But, you know, so, yeah, I'll have to pull it down. I will have to take it down. But until I do take it down, it's Sherry E. Shepard. Don't leave. Com- like, I got, like, almost 2,500 comments. Yeah. Everybody else likes them. But, you know, we have a talk show. You got to be. You have to have yeah, a decorum. Yeah, you have to do that with standards and practices it's the standards. and it's all the, that yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's all of that stuff. It's yeah. a whole different level of, That's right. you know, you're 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 now a leader. You're, you you know, people look up to you. Because mm-hmm. one lady was like, my five-year-old watches you. You are a bad example. I'm not trying. I don't. <laughs> she five. <laughs> like, I got 50 years on this little girl. There, <laughs> she can't look at Rihanna or T- Taylor Swift. <laughs> Who shows their nipples, by the way? But, <laughs> Anyway. <laughs> but not for you, not with daytime. Yeah, we but got the core. S- congrats on your NAACP you. award. Oh, the thank you. Award. That was for best talk show host. That was well, very cool. Yeah. That was really cool. That was another thing. Like, I didn't write a speech because I was just like, I don't know if I. So it was such a surprise when they called my name. Mm. And, but the problem is, is I need to write a speech because everybody is doing these great speeches. Mm. Yeah, mm. where they come full circle. Where they come full and- circle and they say such deep things and so I don't say anything deep I always got to use the bathroom that's not deep like when you get up to accept so I have to I'm gonna write a deep speech but then I'm scared I won't win oh and right this deep speech right. that I'm mm-hmm. just gonna be you know doing in front of my son's class right, you know? right. well it's so. refreshing when you know you're unprepared because you're so humble you don't expect it now everybody who does the deep speech yell and they're prepared yeah. like they've written it yeah so yeah. it comes out and like you because you have the right inflection in uh-huh. your voice like Niecy Nash said I want to thank me <laughs> you know it's like even even Cameron Mannheim remember when she went this is for the fat girls like it just there's something deep about it so I right. need I need deep yeah you know maybe something about reductions or something yeah like the reduction of my of my hope led to the greatness of my expectations. I'll get it. I'll get it. I'll, you gotta help me. <laughs> Can we talk about stand up a little bit? Yes. Like, so, so I, I feel like for a lot of us, we, we a lot of us know Sherry Shepard as uh, an actress or a talk show host, mm-hmm. right? We went and to, to see Fluffy, our friend Fluffy, and Gabriel Iglesias, right? And so we're like, wait, friend. we get there and we're like, wait, Sherry Shepard's opening for Fluffy oh, at was Dodger, Dodger Stadium. Stadium? Yes. Yes. Oh my God! And your Elton outfit. I Did you keep good that? Lord. I do have that. My sequin, <laughs> yes. bl- my sequin blue, and my blue and white um, high heel shoes. That's good yeah. for a date night. Let me tell you something. My friend Gabriel Iglesias mm. and I love him so much. We were on a sitcom called Mystery Iglesias yep. on Netflix. I've known Gabe since I was a struggling comic. He was a struggling comic. Now he's rich. I don't know what and he used to give me a ride to the comedy clubs and his car would backfire sound like freaking bullets hit in the back of the car I'm like look I'm from LA you from East and you from Long Beach this cannot be happening Gabe but he would always give me a ride and we struggled together and he asked me to be on a sitcom but Gabe like I've never performed in front of 60 
thousand mm. people. So when he asked me, I started crying oh. that he would honor me. You know, he would bless me yes. to be on a stage with him because I knew how much that meant to Gabe. And mm. um Nobody recognized me. <laughs> they thought I was but, one of the security guards. Oh my God, stop <laughs> it. Stop. Stop. You're in the glittery <laughs> Elton John I, outfit. I was willing up and they were like, can you tell us where, you know, like, you know, gay E is? And I was like, I don't work here. <laughs> then they, after I left, they was like, oh, she's the one on the show again. But to go up with all of his friends, mm -hmm. I was so honored. Mm -hmm. And he sent me a big, huge, I mean, it was so many people. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. Well, and he knew that that would mean so much to you it too. You guys so have so much. many great memories together. We do. And I I I love Gabriel Iglesias just for that reason. Like he calls me all the time mm -hmm. and you know, I call him. I just love him so much because he he remembers his friends. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. the thing. Gabe just re he came on the show. He got we got really great ratings when Gabe came on. Mm -hmm. So like if I was ever sick, I would want Gabe to sit in. Oh, yeah. that's great. That whole group, Joe Coy yeah. does the same thing where he, Joe, he you know he brings he brings mm -hmm. his people Tiffany. with him. Tiffany, mm -hmm. yeah, it's like they're really tight. And I, I yeah. love that about that that team. That's the thing. It's like, you know, you remember your friends because they have been grinding just as hard. Yep. I try to do that with my laugh lounge, like bring mm -hmm. in people mm -hmm. on my show. We got our laugh lounge yeah. where I can bring in comics that I know have not had the platform to be able to, you know, um, showcase what they can do. And it's been like the audience loves it mm -hmm. when they come in the comics because people need to laugh. And look, yeah. and you're doing it for those people. And, and, and think one of them makes it big and you gave them their start. Absolutely. How empowering is that? I'm, I'm always hoping that if somebody is on the show, that there's somebody that's watching that can mm -hmm. do something. Like I, we even started Funny Over 50, mm -hmm. which is comedians who are over 50, women who've, you know, really pretty much put their life on hold for their kids, their spouses, their partners their jobs, and they feel like, you know, almost giving up. And so we wanted to give those women a chance to be seen. And our winner, Juanita Lolita, I just took her on the road with me, and she was so fantastic, <laughs> and it was sold out, and they loved on her when she came out. That is out. so cool. So I, you know, and she said, and I remember she said, all I want to do is just get one line in one sitcom. And I go, dream bigger, uh, Juanita. Oh, right? But she's been struggling for so long mowing lawns. That's what she was doing, oh, taking care of her kids and divorces. And I go, no, dream bigger. You got on a national TV show. You want to be a series regular on a sitcom. Like, start start speaking differently. Uh -huh. So mm. it was really great to give a platform to women. Well, like and that. you do that every day on your show. And, you know, you're not the feel-good queen of TV for, for no reason. So it's good. You, I mean, you give a lot of people a lot of help. That must feel so good when you go to bed at night that you've helped people. It feels really good, except I feel when I go to bed and I'm like, well, I'm a little lonely over here. So, oh, okay. Well, let's talk about change. that. That's really what's on my mind more so than I help people. I'm like, <laughs> something got to change up in this bed. <laughs> what, but, are you, <laughs> what are you looking for? <laughs> are you looking or are you are you letting it come to you? You know what? You have to be open. You have to. Okay. You have to be open, but you have to. I, I would say letting come to me, but I'm also like I tell people who I like. Yeah. You know, like so I'm open to Trevor Noah. Like I want Trevor <laughs> Noah. I'm open to. Trevor and you know Noah. what? It, I'm I'm learning uh, uh -huh. South African. Okay. Okay. Whatever the language is, with Trevor is from, because okay. I figured that dream is probably not manifesting because I'm not speaking in the right language. So I'm I'm learning. I got my Duolingo, so I'm learning like eight types of African language. Uh -huh. yeah. So I'm putting out there Trevor Noah. How does Noah. Sherry Shepard? date how do you how do you meet how, where do you what do you, you know do? what I was doing my girlfriends who were on Bumble and Hinge and all mm -hmm. of that they would find somebody they they thought would be good for me and my one girlfriend Sally she's Puerto Rican and so she would always go to their page and say I have a girlfriend I think she would be perfect for you uh -huh. you know she's a celebrity so she's very private and she would set me up there was a couple of people I went out with and then uh -huh. there were a couple of people thought I was Puerto Rican so I was like well that's not gonna work uh -oh. but <laughs> I did get set up with a lot of guys my girlfriends would do this so I went out on a lot of dates mm. that's what I think women have to do you have to date more than one person. Mm -hmm. My problem was I was not dating more. I was dating the one person and then I was curly cueing my name and his name and oh, yeah. how many vet is sitting in a tree. Oh my God. <laughs> it's amazing. I still remember that from when I was like seven. Uh -huh. But my dating coach said, you have to you have to learn to date and just have conversation yeah. and just have a good time and not be worried about what's coming next. Right. You get married the first time you date. So that's what I started doing. My uh -huh. girlfriends would set me up. Uh, I would tell people I'm single. 
I'm, and they would say, Sherry, I got a friend who, and I go, yeah, let's just go out. So if I got ghosted, it was not a big deal because I had another date mm -hmm. like the next day. Mm -hmm. Or like when I went to Atlanta, I had three dates, one for breakfast, one for lunch, and one for dinner. Three in one day? Three in one day, That's girl. amazing. I had my thruple date. Uh -huh. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> and it was great because uh -huh. you got, so when one was like, he was like really like boring, mm -hmm. I was like, it's okay because I have lunch and I have dinner. Yeah, yeah, right. Were the, any of them exciting? The one that I got ghosted by was really exciting. Like oh. We went out and had a great time. Uh -huh. He took me to a really nice steak restaurant. We laughed. We had a really good time. And then he didn't call me back. And you know what my biggest mistake was? I let him nibble on the side of my daggone face. Uh. I should, but he was so fine, girl. I was like, go on nibble. Go on nibble. <laughs> Nibble on the side of my face in that ear. He didn't call me back, and I was like, you will never get near this cheek. <laughs> but then when I went back to Atlanta, he came back like he's some big oh, mucky muck with the okay. government about there, and then he's got his own, like yeah. he builds decks uh, with people, and, you know, he yeah. got the money, and he came to my show, and he was like, I like really want, but you are so busy, and I stopped calling. Oh, and I'm like, nope, got another like, date. Yeah, sorry. Right. sorry. So sorry. Yeah. That must feel so good. It felt good. He yeah. kept looking at my ear, and I was like, yeah, I know this ear. Yeah. You want to touch that ear. I know, because it looked good. <laughs> nope, Sorry. <laughs> so you just have to date you have to date yeah. more than one person so you can find you just you go out and have fun mm -hmm. and you learn how to just flirt are you going to do something about this on your show like maybe you'll have a dating segment or some yes. kind of advice or you know you're living it so you could help other women who are out there and women my age too because I think it's hard for women who like you if you're divorced or you've not been married mm -hmm. and you're trying to get out there into this dating world it's scary mm -hmm. and so we have a dating expert Devin Simone she comes over I want a whole segment on like just seasoned women like what do we do you know because the old school ways you just kind of sit there you don't go out you don't make the first move but we're in a different world now yeah you know now I like to go up to men this is what I say now mm, okay. since I've been to Vegas yeah. I'll go up to men I I don't care what they look like. I, and I go, were you one of the Chippendales dancers that uh, I just saw? Uh, <laughs> Let me tell you, this man had a belly bigger than his head. Uh, he was like, well, you know, uh, I, I was I was about to, you know, audition for the Chippendales. They, yeah, yeah, I think you might have seen me. And I was like, I thought it was. You are so fine. Uh, I do that all the time. Because then they get to go and tell their friends, that, yeah, yeah, they thought I was a Chippendale dancer. And I, I could be. So you got to so do something. that's a good icebreaker. Yeah, go up to them and go, what is that you're wearing? Oh, oh my God. You smell amazing. Mm. Men like, to, they if like I came up to you and I said, you yeah. smell amazing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wouldn't you feel good? I, I would. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I can smell you all Thank the way you. over Thank you. It's the Labo 33. The Labo 33. <laughs> yeah, Santal. Yep, and I would say that. You need to get some more. Thank you, Sherry. I went by a man at the airport. <laughs> you and just I go, softened me. You <laughs> see? I literally I'm telling melted, you. Sherry. This is the kind of stuff we got to do. There was a man at the airport, LAX, and he had tattoos of skulls all over his arm. Uh, uh, right. I don't even like skulls. Scared the heck out of me. But uh, I walked up to him, and I said, I like those tats. Uh, I love. <laughs> and he was like, wow. Th man, thank you so much. Sherry's flirting with everyone. I love it. with everybody. <laughs> is that what it is? Just throwing magnets you Fridge, just I'm see telling what sticks. You. Now I didn't want the skull man to come after me, but <laughs> you gotta practice. You just have to practice. Well, we do a segment oh on our God. show. It's letters to Ellen. Okay. And so I got a letter from a, a stepdaughter, Ooh. and I'm wondering if you would read it. Sure. For our listeners. Okay. Because I think it would be usually I read them because they're letters to Ellen, but okay. this could be. Letters you know to Ellen, much, read by Sherry Shepard. And I love how you love me, because this is an 86 point font. Mm. And I love it. I don't need I was about to ask for you my reading glasses. glasses. Girl, you you love on your guests. Thank you so much. Um, it says, Dear Ellen, I'm 25 and I have a stepmother, and I don't know how to handle what's happening with her in my life. My mom passed away eight years ago, and it took my dad a long time to want to date. So when he did, we were kinda happy for him because no one will replace mom. But seeing dad happy makes me so happy. Fast forward to dad falling in love with Angela and recently marrying her and moving her into the house that I grew up in. Angela happens to be an interior designer, happiness, and my dad gave her permission to renovate the house. I can see this going down uh, okay. right now. <laughs> and because of that, I feel unsettled and sad. Hmm. Now Angela wants to replace mom's magic garden with the spa jacuzzi, and she plans to make my childhood bedroom into her office. Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. I wish they would just buy a new house, then at least I wouldn't have to spend holidays in a house that's, a, that's barren of my good memories. I am struggling, Ellen. I feel torn between wanting my father to be happy and wanting to hold on to the memories of my childhood and my mother. 
This is a delicate balance and I'm not sure how to navigate it. I know that life brings change and I'm trying to embrace that. But I also believe there's value in holding on to the things that make us who we are. Please help me figure this out. I love my dad so much, but I don't want to lose sight of my mom. Thank you, Ellen. It means the world to me. Love, Teresa. Teresa, oh. isn't that? I oh. I mean, what's she going to do? I Couldn't there be a compromise? Like, build your garden, keep my bedroom. I think it's hard when a new person comes into mm. your life because, mm -hmm. you know, on the side of the stepmother, because I don't know when she says she's 25, uh -huh. so she doesn't live there. You got a woman who's now into into the, this life. She's yeah. married to this man. She loves him. She wants to create memories with her husband. Mm -hmm. It must be really hard to turn around and see this, you know, of what was. You're Nobody right. wants to lie mm -hmm. in bed with the man and he's still remembering his ex-wife, even though she's not there. Yeah. You, nobody wants to be. The family comes over and they're still oohing and on over how it used to be. Yeah. So this is hard for the stepmother. Mm -hmm. She wants she wants to create new. It's hard for Teresa because she wants to. She wants she doesn't want to let go. Right. And she so, wants her dad to be happy. She wants her dad to be happy, but but I, take some of the. I would say take some of the things that gave you the the best memories because you're not gonna. It's gonna yeah. be too much tension to be putting that on your father. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I know how that is dating a man and he's got kids and mm -hmm. they're looking at me like you don't look like my mom, you don't sound like her, you're moving stuff around, you don't cook like her. That's a lot of pressure. Oh yeah, yeah. It, it's so it's tension. I think that you got to take the things that made you feel good, but. And some therapy. Yeah, yeah. And learning how therapy to. Therapy works. Third half, yeah, I know. Because yeah. I'm supposed to be talking about therapists right now. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I tell her on the but, Ellen but, but I love you show. so much, Ellen, because she keep buzzing my phone. <laughs> <laughs> We're supposed to be doing Zoom, which I don't even. She gets on my nerves because she puts up this back. Well, you don't live in the beach. You live oh, right. in Hackensack, New Jersey. You put that beach <laughs> thing and half your shoulder disappears when you're giving me. But it's, it's unsettling. But. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I think it's a therapy on letting go and moving forward because yeah. you remember your mom. Like mm -hmm. you remember even your mom is, I am a believer in afterlife. Yeah. She's smiling on you. Yeah. And I think your mom would want your father to be, to happy, be happy and to move on. She's yeah. always there with you. Uh, letters to Sherry. Oh my gosh. Uh, no, you're doing better, Ellen. I'm uh, saying you're no, doing no. much better. What <laughs> would you say to Teresa? I, I would say compromise, but I like your plan better. I would say keep the bedroom, have the garden, but but I see what she you're saying. She needs an office. She needs, she needs an office. She needs to create her new, her new home. I once dated a guy. I remember going into his bathroom yeah. and his his ex-wife's bathrobe was still hanging on the Mm -hmm. And that's a little, it's a little creepy. It's creepy. Mm -hmm. It yeah. is creepy. Because do so, you put it on or do you leave well, it? Yeah, what do you do? I, it's just, I was just that's like, That's the oh. compromise. I put that baby and I'm going to dance for you now. Oh Why my just God. Dance? See, all that made you sick. But you smell good. Thank you, Sherry. You may be disgusted, but you smell Jeez. good. Like, I don't know what to, con I, that's hard. Oh, yeah, it is. It she's got to walk in the room and it's the childhood bedroom and she's looking at you and you're 25. Uh, yeah, You're right. supposed to keep an 11-year-old's room, this, you know, where we can use this room. At a point, it does become almost sad. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. You're right. living right. in that like, You space. have to move yeah, on. We have to. to. We Life all have to move on. on. We all remember, Mom. Yes. Everybody remember. Like maybe once a year, y'all get together and go and burn something and yeah. like yep. you know, you know, pour dinner at her favorite restaurant. Do something right. spiritual. Something. Go yeah. to the favorite yeah. restaurant. But yeah. the but keeping everything the same. And you got new energy in. It's hard for that to coexist. Yeah. I think. Well, you as a woman dating, how do you know when, or do you ever introduce mm. anyone to your son? Um, that's a hard one. I got to, I you know, I first of all, I'm very protective. Mm -hmm. So I got to see he's got to become friends with my son. Okay. I'm not asking you to love my yeah. son. I'm asking you to respect my son because yeah. mm -hmm. it's hard to come in just loving somebody else's mm -hmm. kids. And my son will look at you and tell you, I don't want no new daddy. Right. So you already starting yeah. behind the eight ball. <laughs> <laughs> One time but, Jeffrey's like, I don't want a new daddy. And if you get somebody in this house, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do something. I'm like, let me turn this recorder off. This I'm oh not posting God. this on Instagram. So but this how time. do you how do you know then when 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 Jeffrey respects him too? How do Jeffrey you know? will tell me. He will? Well, Jeffrey will tell me. Interesting. But I try not to bring too many. <laughs> Look at me. I try <laughs> not to bring too many. <laughs> Dang, I sound like a whole. You whole. just showed oh yourself. <laughs> oh, my God. That, drink your well, drink, drink. You didn't yeah. want that game. We yeah. have a surprise for you. Do you like surprises? Is his name Trevor Noah? No. Oh, it's not Trevor. I'm oh, so... Okay. Can okay. someone open it's that door? Trevor Noah. Yeah, I'm like, who is coming through We're the door? We're going to open up the door. Girl, if it's a subpoena, my ex-husband <laughs> want a subpoena. Who is it? Come on in.
It's, oh, that's my cousin, Marcus. Look at this. <laughs> that's my cousin. That's who I love so much. <laughs> I was scared for a minute. I was like, <laughs> I, I said, Marcus, Ellen don't know me that well. Who's she got coming through this door? <laughs> well, he kind of, I can make him look like, that's my cousin. That's like my cousin, um, Marcus. And and I love him so much. And and um, he's got four. How many Emmys you got, Marcus? Yeah, you how many a, Emmys do you four. have, Marcus? Marcus, Marcus has Smith, four KTLA, Emmys. KTLA, producer extraordinaire. And you're producing specials and you're, you're just I killing know. it. And I got one Emmy. He's got four, but I'm gunning. <laughs> Every time I get nominated, I'm like, I'm gonna. I could text him and I go, I'm gonna give me another Emmy. Like we're competitive in the family. Man. But I love my cousin. That's so cool. Yeah, he oh loves you too. Just, and that's and nothing against you, Cuzzo. I'm glad you walked through the door. But I sure was hoping it was a man like that. It was like a date. I love you. But we just gonna go have drinks too. and I'm gonna just whine a lot. Like I, I literally, I was, I was like, oh my god, like they got. Jason Momoa was about to walk through this door. Oh, my God. I, I, I was, now my we know stomach. your taste. So next time, now we know your taste. Grass set up a little straighter. I pushed these boobs out. I was like, somebody is walking through this door and going to nuzzle my neck. Jason I, Momoa, is he, Jason, like, is he a dream man? Jason Momoa is mm, a dream guy. Yeah, yeah. Trevor Noah is a dream guy. And it's yeah. like, even regular. Like if you, you I just, you have, a, you got to have a job. Mm -hmm. Like you got to be able yeah. to contribute. So I'm not, I'm not paying for no more, like, Dinners and yeah, lunches. Right. Mm -mm. You, you got to so. be taken care of. You're Sherry Shepard. No, you don't have to take care of me. Oh. You just have to match me in something. Oh, okay. You know, I'm right. not pulling out my credit card. Like, we can be together for a while, and then we can mm -hmm. start going Dutch. But don't bring up Dutch to me <laughs> when we're first meeting. <laughs> like, right. I believe you should always date, but you got to look at who you're dating. Mm -hmm. So if you come to me and go, oh, my God, my credit card. Is... One time I went out on a date with this celebrity. I can't say who. He went through nine credit cards. No, I swear, no Everyone Sherry. got declined and I'm sitting there in the Rolls Royce Corniche I'm sitting there like do you not pay what bills do you pay oh. and I and I sat there and I was like I'm not taking out my card well I'll be in jail before I take out my credit card oh. I will go to no jail. sir Whoa, nine one finally cards. worked we were now in Santa we're Monica know. is he white or black he's black okay, okay. athlete or actor <laughs> messed up there you was like I almost uh, no, well, black. it sounded white to me I'm, I'm not gonna lie <laughs> You smell good. I'm just saying. It. I'm just saying. <laughs> you were like, that's I don't a, think any that's black a white man problem. And getting nine cards declined. That's a white guy thing. Well, so you know he already had money. But I guess his business manager wasn't paying them. Like, we literally he went through all these credit yeah, cards. Yeah. And I'm sitting there in the Rolls Royce. The Rolls Royce. It was either a Bentley or a Rolls Royce. He picked me up in the <sighs> Bentley or the Rolls Royce. And he was taking me home. And I'm like, I'm not taking my card out. Yeah. I will not That is do so it. embarrassing for Michael B. Jordan. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> That is slanderous. Girl, don't you get us soon. Not don't true. you get us soon. <laughs> that was Michael no B. Jordan. <laughs> it's okay. He listens. He knows what I'm talking about. Oh, my God. He's got it together. He's good. He's got his money. Can I, can I ask you one more question? And you sure. don't have to answer this. I sure. don't know, I don't know the, the internals of this relationship, yeah. but I'm a huge wrestling fan. MVP? Oh, my God, girl. Thank <laughs> okay, he lives for WrestleMania. Okay. I love WrestleMania, all, too. We're trying to get Roman Reigns. I swear. We're trying, like, you I'm, need like, Roman. We, but we've had Jake Cargill. Okay. We've had Jade's Bianca beast, Ford and Montez. Oh, my God. Um, and we've had a Trinity Fatu. Uh-huh. Um, Naomi. Naomi. So yeah. Naomi now. I'm sorry. And so did, I'm trying. We're trying to get uh, Roman. Did, I was were you him. in a relationship with MVP? We weren't in a relationship, okay. but I I was crushing on him. Oh, you were. So we did go out mm -hmm. on a couple you dates. Did. He took me to my prom. What? He took because I had never gone to my prom when I was 18. So MVP took me to my prom. You know what that's like sitting with a bunch of 17 and 18 year olds <laughs> when you like, but I didn't care. I loved it. And he dropped me off and he gave me a kiss. It was so great. I, oh. I did. I crushed on MVP like a lot. Mm. I, love I really that. did. But we were both so busy and like him being with the WW, the WWE, like mm. he was always on the road everywhere. Oh, I yeah. never really, like he had to get permission to come off the road to even do stuff with me. Yeah. Cause, uh -huh. and, and that was, that's his money. So, but I, we still talk. I love him. That's awesome. Yes, he's great. I know Ryan's like, oh my god, I don't know so if I great. should ask or not. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, I, can I, ask I, me. I, was, I love, I, I, I love MVP. Yeah. So great, wow. but yeah, we so we're wrestling fans. John Murray is, and I am. So mm -hmm. we always try to get, we always try to get them on our show. Yeah, because we love John Murray. You've got a big job. <laughs> Yeah, he's got because I'm always going, can we get so-and-so? And that's my line I also use now. And also, in addition to you smell good, I'm like, you need to come on and sit on my couch and play with me. Like, that's my line oh, that I use. Well, that's I don't know if that's a human kind of resource issue. escalates a little issue. bit more than you smell good. Yeah, they come on my couch, sit on my couch and, and play, play with, with me? me? Yeah, they like it. I mean, the show. Oh, that, the oh I thought you 
I'm at your no, couch. I'm at the no, the show. No, the show. I'm like thinking about your living room couch. I'm like, wow. Okay, that all right, escalated. Mr. Smell Good. Okay. You dream big. All right now, I like that. I, should, th- yeah. th- I could say it for that too. Right. No, but I mean the show. Like if I want him to come on, like that's a good. You know, with Lenny Kravitz, like come sit on my couch and play. Oh God, don't come say that to show. Ellen. Oh my oh, God, my yeah, Lord. don't talk about. Yes, you, do you have a line like where you go? Come well, sit I've on my been mic. married for so long, I can't remember lines anymore. But, but the fantasies you have. No, but I, I have my crushes. I have my crushes. But here's the thing: Ellen flirts, but she doesn't know she flirts, or she does, and she doesn't know she flirts. But you have to flirt when she's flirted with. Yes, she plays like, oh, I didn't know he's flirting with me. Uh, bullshit. Own it, mama. You no, I'm flirt. serious. Have, we were in a bar. This really... Oh, God. No, just listen. Just take yes. it for a second. Sherry's uh-huh. going to guide you here, Elle. All right. Okay. okay. This really, like, tattoo, like, really good-looking, like, yeah. younger guy, built, great, oh, wow. uh-huh. everything. Ellen was like, can I try the 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 red whatever? I have to taste it before I commit to it because I goes, hate sweet wine. Yes. She's like, can you pour me that? And he goes, I'll pour you anything you want. Ooh, and I yeah. said, Ellen, that... that he is like what? into you, and yeah. she's like, "No, he's not." Sherry, he was gorgeous. I was, like, and but, but she doesn't. Ellen, like, you, why would you well, not think he was into you? Well, but I, I don't know. Is I, that what it is? You've just been with your husband. You've been so, with I think your husband I've been so married long. for so long. Over yeah, twenty years. So I'm just like, I don't notice See, it. Over I twenty don't years, look for it. He watching football. You walk in front of a naked pickup, the remote control <laughs> all slow, and then he don't want to do nothing. He goes, "Thanks, don't even look up." You used to that. Like you need to. You need to let this man flirt. You, you little flirting. Okay, you beautiful. Flirting. Yeah, look at him and just smile. Smile okay. like that extra three seconds. <laughs> it's nice to make somebody make you feel good. Okay, I'll lock eyes and smile next lock time. Lock eyes and smile. And then mm-hmm. I'll like run away. <laughs> <laughs> and cower in the corner. <laughs> Girl, we need to go out. I know, we girl, do. Uh, next we need to go, I will have you LA. hoeing all week. I just want to observe you and take some I'm notes. Girl, and, uh, are, you ever do your show from L.A. for like a week No, we have to, you know, we, this, this third yeah. season, let us get some like really amazing ratings and yeah. all of that stuff. I'm, I'm saying we got to like travel. Yeah. Yeah, that will yeah. be on my suggestion list. Uh-huh, and yeah. then when we do, but I don't want to wait a year. Like I will come back and we just go out. And, okay. Like we'll just rename ourselves. We'll give ourselves new names. <laughs> okay. Well, they I'm gonna be who Jamaica. You are. Who are you gonna what be? What the hell? <laughs> I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be Veronica. Oh Ver- my god. Oh, okay. oh, me like with a K. Jamaica and Veronica, <laughs> Veronica with the K. Yeah. I love that. We gotta talk in a different accent, girl. Oh, like god. we can't. I'm gonna be Russian. No, I'm gonna be <laughs> Russian. No, not Russian. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna be Ukrainian. Okay. Ukrainian. Yes, All yeah. right. Who? What are you gonna be? With the Ukrainian girl, Compton. <laughs> Straight. <laughs> What's your name, man? Huh? My name's Jamisha. <laughs> Jamisha. This is my girlfriend, Veronica, with a cat. Is that your car right there? I like that. I like you. See, we got to do it. And what's your accent? Come on, give it to him. She's she going to have to practice. Uh, you got to practice. Yeah. I'm going to have to practice. Yeah. I know, because your Ukrainian is going to sound Irish. Area. Okay. You got to work on this accent. Do it in front of your husband. <laughs> and you know what he's going to do? It's, he go, y'all been married so long, he's going to be like, what the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> but you know what I want to look like? I want to have one of those Bob black hair Bob with bangs, like a Oh, you want to be a, the spy who yeah, loved me. Yes. Like, you want to be a whole. That's my, I want, that's what I want to do. Yeah. That's it. We yeah. got, we got to go and just have fun. <laughs> yeah. That's what we're going to do. Me and you. Do you love, uh, do, how do you feel about living in New York compared to here? I love it. You do? Yeah. Really? I, you know what? I like the vibe. In mm-hmm. L.A., the weather, I love L.A., and you know, and I miss my pool. But in L.A., it's just kind of like, yeah, I'm going to work this morning. We're going to go have lunch. In New York, it's just like a hustle. Oh, so it's you a, wake up it's like a gr- You wake up, people are moving. Yes. You're on the train. I get like, that. It's just, it's an energy that New York Manhattan has. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I love it. I love walking. The, you know, everybody's working, and they go, hey, mom. Mommy, you know, you, it's just like, I just, I love that. Yeah. Huh. Good. Uh-huh. So I will be in New York for a while. All right. Oh, love it. But I'm going to come back for you, Veronica. You're coming back. With the K. <laughs> oh, I'll be back for you. You better believe That's it. That's right. With the little black bob. I'm going to send you a wig. I got a wig, I think, in my, in my suitcase okay. right now that matches I'm what you want to be. Good Lord. Season three, Sherry Shepard. <laughs> Tune in 12. PM on Fox. 12 PM on Fox. Thank you, Ellen. Oh, oh my, my God. God. Can Sherry. I can I say too, Sherry? Yeah. Honestly, yes. we because we're in here, we work a lot till one in here after the show. You bring what we try to bring on the radio. Do you bring that to TV? And every you day. do, and you bring that through the radio waves. But you do. So and thank you, you. You are just a joy. You really are. Oh, I appreciate a, I, that. I, 
we all love you. Mm -hmm. We yeah. do. We need to laugh. We need to smile. Yeah. We need to just mm -hmm. bring just lightness yeah. into a world where, you know, we weren't designed to take on as much as we have to take on in mm -hmm. social media. And, mm -hmm. and so it's just nice to be able to, and this is what you bring as well, you know, where you just lighten someone's load for just just an hour, just, just 30 minutes. Minute. It's just like mm -hmm. people need that to be able to let go and laugh. Mm -hmm. And that's what we bring. We want to bring a good time and joy and laughter. Play and on the do. couch with play, Sherry. Play, yeah. on, play on the couch with Sherry. <laughs> I like that. With Veronica and Jamika. <laughs> All of a sudden, there are four of us. 